the chords of Government Mule, and of course we're going to be talking about Warren Haynes. And Government Mule formed in 1994 as a side project for Warren when he was working with the Allman Brothers, and then somewhere around 1997 he left the Allman Brothers to focus on Government Mule exclusively, and they released a bunch of albums and tours and became, you know, very uh, well-known and popular, and then he kind of started to dance around between the Allman Brothers, Government Mule, he also worked with The Dead, and Phil Lesh and Friends, and uh, there's a ton of different people he's worked with. Derek Trucks, Dave Matthews, there's a ton. Now Warren's a very tasteful, you know, guitarist. Lots of feel and emotion and energy, you know, when he plays. Uh, electric guitar, slide guitar, acoustic, you know, and also his vocals, too, are very expressive. So he's kind of the, you know, total package kind of player where he can sing, he can play, he can you know, grab a solo, he can hit an acoustic, you know, he can do all these different things, and he's very intricate and very uh, respectful to the, the music form, and, you know, he loves blues, he loves early rock, uh, he even gets into some jazz, you know, and folk and acoustic uh, ideas, too. So if you're not really hip to Warren, I definitely recommend, you know, check out some of his solo albums, Government Mule, some of the work he did with the Dead and Allman Brothers and some of those groups. And it's really interesting to see him just stretch out and just start jamming, you know, and he grabs, you know, real rootsy, you know, blues and rock riffs and fills and leads, but, you know, great tone, great feel, great bending and vibrato, and just, you know, a really a marvelous guitarist. The intro that was Bad Little Doggy from uh, Life Before Insanity, and it's actually tuned down a half step. So I didn't put up the warning at the beginning of the video, you know, with an alter tuning notice, mainly because this is the only example that's going to be tuned down a half step, and then everything else in this lesson is in standard. So I wanted to demonstrate it, you know, in the right pitch or the right tuning. And when I switch to the Les Paul, I'm going to be back in standard. So, you know, if you're, if you're watching this video and I'm playing the Strat, I'm tuned down a half step. But this is the only, you know, song I'm going to demonstrate on the Strat. But it's interesting because it starts off with that real gutsy, you know, kind of opening bending idea. And then he hits A major into a, you know, a D over A, technically. This part. Those are very common in rock and blues and a ton of, you know, styles of music. But uh, there's just something about that opening line, it just grabs your attention. You know, you hit play on that song and it's like, whoa, what's, you know, what's getting ready to happen here? So he kind of lets that ring and then he just starts riffing around in this E7 kind of thing. Something like this. sucker for great, you know, kind of funky single note riffs like that. I love them. You know, you can hear it from, you know, ZZ Top and Van Halen, and there's a ton of songs that have riffs like that. But slowly, so it's, you know, kind of a two-part phrase. The first part, you know, kind of asks a question, and the second part answers it. And then he starts throwing in a little piece of E minor 7 right there, which is really cool. It's like this, you know, like a horn hit, but he's doing it on guitar. And I love that, you know, it's just, it kind of grabs you once again, grabbing your attention. Something about that riff, it's really cool. Next, we have the title track from Life Before Insanity, and you can see I'm using the Les Paul, so we're back in standard tuning, and it looks like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
right there you can see we start with that A major and we're moving to D over A again, just like we had in uh, Bad Little Doggy, but we're in standard tuning instead of tuned down a half step. So it does sound a little different, but it's the same chords. And then right here, that's basically a C major 13. And a very spacey and mysterious, you know, sounding chord. So just think of, you know, like a cowboy E major chord and just move up one fret and don't play the low E string, but play everything else. And there's the C major 13. And repeat it again. And then he moves up here, and this is gonna be an A7 sus4. So there you can see we're holding that A note there on the D string, we're holding E on the B string and then a series of open strings, the open A, open G, and open high E. So right there, that's basically moving to a G6. So we're holding the third fret on the low E and the B with the open D, open G, and open high E. down to this, and that's going to be uh, a D add 9 over F sharp. And then move down and grab that F note, and that changes it to an F major 13. And it's got that little single note riff in there too. part and I love those chords too they sound great next we have the song easy times which is from a more recent government mule album uh, revolution come revolution go from 2017 and it has this real soulful kind of R&B loose feel kind of reminds me a little bit of you know Hendrix or Curtis Mayfield or something like that and it looks like this <laughs> because it is kind of a slower song. But it starts with the B minor right there. And then he just kind of comes down this little double stop slid melodic thing. And I love how he kind of scoots into that C sharp and grabs that A at the end. You know, really cool. It's like a little, you know, cherry on top right there. And then right there, it's kind of like an A, you know, he's kind of signaling there. So we move from that B minor down to A. And then right there, he kind of slides in and out of this double stop. And that's kind of like a little piece of G major right there. And then it's uh, F sharp minor seven right here. top part of the chord here and then just kind of fills it in as he moves down the chord and then at the end just kind of imply E major and do that whole cycle again song Beautifully Broken from the Deep End Volume 1, and it looks and sounds like this. And 
slid double stop action like we had in uh, easy times but it's a little different we're in a different key too so we're grabbing the double stop there and then sliding back into that C note eventually and then a double stop hammer on pull off something like that and then we're gonna start in A right there and he's also plucking the higher strings with his finger, so he's kind of doing some hybrid picking in there uh, during this part. And then right here, it's kind of tricky. So it all kind of happens in a blur. tricky little maneuver there then we're gonna move down to this that's just D over F sharp and that F6 and he's just kind of you know funking his way through that where he's you know doing the hybrid picking and kind of changing between those chords Seven. Like when the verse starts right there, but I like that transition from the D over F sharp to the F6, and then eventually E7. And it's got a really dark sound, even though you're technically just playing a bunch of major chords, you know, or implied major chords D over F sharp, F6, and E7. But it sounds kind of sick, you know. Percussion. Up next we have the song Fool's Moon, which is also from Deep End Volume 1. It's a pretty popular, you know, mule tune, and it's something like this. <laughs> single note riff in the beginning and it's kind of cool because it's you know based in F sharp and he's grabbing you know uh, some higher notes in F sharp and then he answers that with lower notes in F sharp so he's kind of split that riff in half and then the second half but I like that where you hear the high part and then the lower part and he puts it together top just hit that double stop and at the bottom you know eventually hit that F sharp power chord and you're there and then right there just A to A sharp to a B power chord there it's just basically B A to an F sharp 7 the last example comes from the song fire in the kitchen which is from Warren's first solo album uh, tales of ordinary madness and I've talked to some people about that album, and they always seem to forget about it. Like, oh yeah, that's before Government Mule. And uh, it's really cool. Something like this. Really cool. 
basically starts off with this, and that's kind of an F sharp seven. But then he's also using the open B string there just for a second, and that's the add 11. So he's kind of flirting with the 11th there. And I love, you know, like little chord moments like that where it's just kind of unusual and different. And then it starts the single note riff. that again so it's kind of a stretch you know kind of about a B minor right there time and extends a little bit. And I like how it moves, you know, from that D to B and then A to F sharp. And you just kind of wait on that F sharp and then when the verse starts he answers it with an A power chord to a B power chord. So we got this nice pull to it. It's kind of unusual, but I like that. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Government Mule and Warren Haynes. And definitely, he's a very interesting and expressive and soulful guitarist. You know, he has rock influences, blues, and jazz. You know, I mentioned, you know, some of that earlier in the lesson, but he really is, you know, a special guitarist. You know, he always puts a lot of thought and feel, you know, into his music, into his ideas. And uh, there's a lot you can, you know, focus on Government Mule, you can go back and listen to some of the stuff he did with the Allman Brothers and with Derek Trucks and, you know, tons of the people that he's kind of worked with. And uh, they actually did a really good version of uh, War Pigs on the Deep End, you know, kind of concert DVD that came out. And Jason Newstead was playing with Government Mule and they're, you know, doing a Sabbath cover. And I always thought that performance was awesome. You could just feel, you know, the energy. All right, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.